so welcome to Diane and my channel my name is Yanni and I'm so happy you stopped by for again two new DIYs and especially this DIYs you can also do with your kids let's jump into our first DIY over to the craft place of Diane I'm going to make a children DIY or at least I think it's cute for my home but you can also do it for your children or with your children or for the room for your children um, I have a blank canvas, the same size as Jenny has. And first I want to paint the edges with this blackboard paint. Then I'm going to search myself a print on the internet, uh, which I can use as a background. And then you see it already here, I have some cardboard and I want to make a B. So first let's make a nice black base and then find ourselves a really cute background and then cut out our cute B. And that is it actually. So here we go. Please don't mess up my shirt. This is actually an old one, or old, pretty old. And I wear it really often now when I work from home because, yeah, it is such a comfortable sweater. Oh, the paint is always thicker than I expect. So I don't use it for a time and I think, oh, it's way more thicker than I expected it to be. I think I'm going to flip it over a little bit like this because now I can paint the edges here and there as well. I'm not going to paint the whole background. That is not the purpose for now. Only the outer corners because you know, as I said I want to use a print a free background. I think I'm going to search on Pinterest and then print it out for this DIY. So just do it roughly. I'm not going to tape it to set off the pattern or the part that I want to paint. Okay, I think I'm pretty much done for now. Just let the whole thing dry and find ourselves a print while we're waiting till it's dry. This will be my background print. I just found a free wallpaper from I believe it was Pixabay and I just typed in the don't worry be happy myself. Uh, and this here are the printables for the bee. This is going to be his body. Uh, this is going to be, uh, I don't know the word, but things upon his head. You know, the antennas. And these are going to be the wings, all made out of the shape of hearts. Um, Ink still has to dry of these prints, but I think I can start cutting them out roughly. Uh, these are going to be glued upon the cardboard, and then I'm going to cut them out with a knife. Um, and this I'm going to cut out with scissors, and then uh, glue it upon the black background. This one is done, time to move on to the B. I'm not going to cut it up, you know, all clean and well because I want to glue it upon the cardboard and after that I want to cut out the shape. So I'm going to do it roughly. Oh, can you see? Yeah, you can. Just like this. Saves me a lot of time and I'm going to cut it out anyway. So, save myself some time. Uh, these are really small for the antennas so I don't know which size is well so I printed them in three different sizes just three printables of hearts nothing really special I'm not going to cut them separately yet I want to keep them together first because these things are so small I'm going to get rid of them if I don't look close enough I just recolored them with Photoshop, but paint will also do. That is something of a big deal, I suppose. Both programs are practically the same for these base things. Uh, 
and I mean this is also perfect to do together with your kids if you want to if you want to decorate their rooms with really cute spring or summer actually so so suitable for summer decor and uh, only have of course have to watch out with the knife but if you have a creative solution for that you can also use paper you know just thick colored paper I think that will work as well but with cardboard you get a little bit more of a 3d effect which I personally like but that is totally up to you you don't have to do the same thing as we do this is just a source of inspiration okay and that was the last one I'm going to get rid of this paper and uh, yeah I think then it is time to glue uh, the hearts to the cardboard I'm not going to glue this uh, because this is really precious stuff I don't want the ink to you know mess all up when I'm applying my pot so I'll leave that as long as possible drying um, first we do okay, the this is a piece of an old box which I have in front of me uh, if you're wondering why I cut out every separate part of his body then uh, I will tell you that is to increase the def 3d effect this is a word of the B and in in the meantime, or later on, you will sh I will show you what I mean with that. Cut out the excess part of the cardboard because I'm not going to use everything. Um, I need two of each color, so this one is too much. This one as well. Why did I print three of them? I don't know. I think this will do. Okay. Now I take out my cheap glue, not my expensive mud potch, this is the cheap stuff from Action, Europeans will know it, that is some sort of Dollar Tree for us, I'm just applying some glue, spread it out a little bit, I'm not going to use a brush for this, because this will just be roughly one good thing about this oh forget what I said I wanted to say one good thing about this stuff is that it doesn't wobble bubble but it is as you can see just continue with the rest I think that is because I didn't apply it with a brush don't know if that matters to this cheap stuff but at least to my potch it makes huge huge difference uh, I didn't did it, did it with this stuff. Well, this is slightly better. I think it'll dry up really well, but we have to be patient for that. Oh, this can use a little bit more here on the edges and here on the bottom as well. And here goes the last one. I have to let it dry for at least, I think, 15 minutes. Otherwise, I did this before. If I start gluing around or cutting around and the glue isn't dry yet, you tear up the whole, um, you know, the whole craft. And we don't want that. So just leave it this way. And wait till it's dry and then we can start cutting out with it.
hello everyone i'm back it is the next morning i had to wait till the glue was dry enough and once it was dry enough it was too dark to start filming again but today we're going to assemble our craft um first i'm going to seal these things here with my Podge. uh let me check how i have to start first i think this one this one yeah so this is going to be the body of the bee, this is going to be his face, and then here we have its wings, just like this, I can't hold it better than that. Um, but first I'm going to seal everything, and then we start gluing around, so let's just do it! Hey, let's not dry everything while we wait. While uh, they're out of the screen, the cardboard is drying. I also have, of course, still to uh, glue this paper upon my canvas. So I'm going to take back my cutting board. Put these ones here and just start my parching around upon the back side of this paper. Okay, there's a mud patch upon the paper now. Time to take it off. Hopefully, yes. I can do this with one hand. Okay, time to glue it here upon the cardboard. And this, I think this is the most difficult part for me because I really want to glue straight and into the center, but I'm not sure if that will work. I think we're now in the middle. Still a little bit of potch here. And here as well. Oh, that one is stuck. Okay, let it dry and then it's time to seal this thing again. Of course, I still gotta seal this uh, because we want to protect our print. Uh, I'm not going to seal the black parts, only the part where the paper is because I want to uh, actually remain uh, the blackboard paint in a matte color. And Mod Podge is still a little bit, uh, how do you call it, shiny. So I'm not going to put Mod Podge everywhere upon this craft, only upon the paper parts. Okay, this one is sealed, it's ready to dry. Oh, here at the top there is missing a little tiny edge of potch. Just like so. We'll let it dry really well because uh, it is a little bit, you know, bubbly now. Uh, oh, sorry, there's my phone. <laughs> uh, this goes away uh, after the mud potch is dry. So I leave this bee and uh haha, <laughs> leave this bee funny. Uh, and I'll go to assemble the bee from cardboard. Okay, time to assemble the bee. Um, I'm going to build it layer by layer and I'm going to be like this. But I wanted to Yeah, I'm going to do it really carefully. I'm going to put a uh, mod podge on the back. Not that much. Of the cardboard and yeah I think I'm going to do all all the podge. can also do cheap glue but this type of cardboard 
I don't know, the cheap glue wasn't, I think, the perfect option. This just sticks so much better than the cheaper glue. I think we go immediately to the second one. Going to do the wings and its face face is the last part. I'm only in doubt oh. if I'm going to do you know, its face here on top, like this, or underneath like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it on top. That looks better than here. Okay. This is really just very easy. I think any type of glue will work, except my tacky glue from the cheaper brand. So, the body of the bee is done. Let me check how this fits underneath here. Let's be a little bit lower. I think I'm only going to potch here the tips of the wings. So only here the tips of the wings. The rest isn't applied underneath the cardboard body of the bee. This is actually more than enough. Now they're only attached to this yellow heart, so I have to push here. And I'm satisfied with the result, but I'm letting it dry a little bit longer before I can attach it to the craft of the canvas. Okay, I think it is almost dry, so I'm going to turn it over and carefully put mud potch or oh, maybe I use the tacky glue for this because there's already mud potch upon the paper craft I think I'm going to use the tacky glue but I'm going to brush it out especially here in this wing needs a lot of glue Look at that, this was weird. Now carefully, really carefully start brushing out. The glue. I'm going to leave it a little bit before applying it to the canvas because I want it to dry really well and this is a really thick layer of glue which is exactly how I had it in mind because I want it to be stuck really well Just like so. Okay, moment of truth. Going to stand up. Oh, this is going to be so cute. Yeah, maybe this is. Oh, 
it already felt well. Then this has to be its place. Now let it dry. Look how cute this is. Okay, it's time to give the bee a face. I have a black marker here with a very fine tip. Just draw a cute face upon him. Oh. One part of the mouth is bigger than the other part. Let's redo this. And make the eyes a little bit bigger as well. There you go. Only one thing is missing now. The antenna is on top of his head. I printed three different sized hearts. Well, this one here is obviously too big. Um, yeah, I actually want to use these, but I'm afraid that the cardboard doesn't hold it, so I think I'm going to cut them out both uh, from cardboard and see which one lasts the best while cutting. I think we just have to find out that. I can give you one advice if you are using cardboard for this craft, especially when you're crafting with children, don't use cardboard which is thick like mine because this is actually how thick it a cardboard how more difficult it is to cut out uh, you know tiny shapes like this so let's glue them upon some uh, cardboard let it dry and then let's cut out the antennas uh, just use mock potch now simply because that is drying a little bit faster than the cheaper glue because that had to dry overnight and that is perfect if you have the time but at this moment I don't have that much time left anymore I'm always such a slow crafter and everything lasts longer than I expected it to be Okay, have a little patience. I think within half an hour they're ready to cut out. antennas are cut out. I have to cover up the sides a little bit with black marker, um, but I think the sides of these are perfect. Um, yeah, now I only need to have a small part where I can put the antennas on. Just going to cut out a small piece of cardboard. I think this will be enough. And I can just paint it with black ma marker. marker. Let me check how long they have to be. Really, I'm using the word be so often uh, today. Yeah, I think this is long enough. That is cool. Okay. Cut out the other one in the same length. Almost there. This is rubbish. I'm not going to use the smaller ones. These are really... It is impossible for me to cut them out without breaking. Here is also a little part of the paper just here. Uh, and I don't want it to happen. So using the middle size. Okay, almost there. Time to cover up the last edges 
of the antennas with just black marker. You can use actually any kind of marker you want. I'll be using a glass marker because that one has the finest tip for me to work with. I like working with fine tips on pencils. Oh, there's a little bit white peeking through. Yeah, this one was ruptured. So I have to cover up the crack. They are already sealed in. I did that before to prevent cracking. And that I almost made that. Unfortunately, not completely. These are, well, now we have to color these ones. I'm not going to paint them or seal them. This will do. Okay, first I want to glue the tips of the antennas to the sticks. Okay, just using some cheap glue and I've used too much. So I'm going to divide it throughout two parts directly at once. Let it dry. Now it's time to carefully, really carefully, put some glue here. And attach them to the head of the bee. I hope this works. And here is the final result of the DIY for today. I love the 3D effect of the bee. But I recommend you, if you're doing this craft with your children or grandchildren, maybe use thinner cardboard because this is way too thick. If you want to cut out the antennas on top, that was quite a hard job without rupturing the whole, per whole thing apart. Let us know in the comment section what you think of this DIY. So this video is also part of a challenge which is called the Trash for Treasure Challenge and is hosted by the beautiful Casey from Coffee with My Sunshine. Her co-host for this month is Mom from Mom Does Live Handmade. And of course I will link both of the ladies uh, in my description box and of course I will link also the playlist with tons of beautiful inspiration for you to find which is all in tra for also Trash for Treasure. And of course like I always say, if you like the Yen and my content, you like a little bit of chaos and fun, I hope you will consider subscribing to our channel also. Enough talking, let's go to our second DIY. So here you see what we will use for this uh, trash to treasure because it has to be a lot of trash. So you see here my old prints, I have them already for, I think, in my closet for, I think, because I'm a person who prints always too much <laughs> so this uh, prints I already have there I think already a year and a half I think last year I have uh, the Mackenzie child print uh, a lot in my home so this time is a little bit of a mix with both of them so I am going to choose between uh, this uh, prints because I have them laying around of course uh, Diane and I always uh, both of us have such a, a canvas because this one is also in our stash and of course we are going to try to uh, make each uh, one of our own so Diane makes her vision of it and I make my vision of it so and of course some cardboard 
uh, we will use some old cardboard from old boxes from uh, things I ordered online so I always use the cardboard so everything I use is most most of it is everything is trash and I normally throw it away but I am a person who keeps a lot of things so I always have things for years laying around so this is the time just to uh, clean it up a little bit so we are going to use these items for uh, our trash to treasure so let's come with me and let's jump into our DIY so you see I chose for this a uh, little lighter color of the Mackenzie Child print because I think it's a little bit different again. So I am going to uh, cut them out and make them fitting for to mud podge them on uh, top of my canvas. So I'm going to cut it, mud podge it and then I show you how uh, the top is looking like. So you see I cut them out and I make them fitting for uh, on top of my canvas. Like I said, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to mud podge it on top of my canvas and then I hope it will dry up without wrinkles, but with mud podge you never know any way you do it. Uh, one time it's with wrinkles and the other time it's without, so I'm going to try to do my best and then I show you how the top is looking like. So you see, while mal, and while mal. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, in meanwhile my, when my canvas is drying I'm going to make a ladybug uh, from uh, cardboard of course and I'm going to try to uh, do the size of this pot so I do the uh, this for the uh, little for his body and this for his head so I'm going to draw out two uh, little rounds and then I will cut them out Oh, of course, this one, <laughs> if you have to draw it, you have to do it right, or else you don't get a nice circle. And I'm going to do this one. So his head will be a little bit, whoa, his head will be a little bit smaller. So, you see, these are the two sides I will use and of course I will do another one because we have to make the wings and I will do this uh, side, the wings in this size so I'm going to make one round again for his uh, wings so I have two of the bigger ones and one of the smaller ones this is also a nice craft you can do with your uh, uh, children if they like uh, crafting also so I will cut them out and then we are going to try to make a ladybug out of it. So you see here I have the, his head and of course his little um, uh, body from the little, uh, little ladybug. And of course I'm going to, first I'm going to paint this both in the, the black color and then I'm going to glue this on top of it. And from the other round I will make, I will cut them in half. And then I will have his wings so I can lay them uh, on the side of them. So, but first I'm going to uh, paint this in the black color and this one in the red color. So I do his head and of course don't forget the sides. And just I use the school board paint because I love working with the school board paint. But you can use any chalk paint you want. So... I will paint this off and then I will show you how the pieces are looking like in the colors. So you see here, this is the uh, the canvas I did with the Mod Podge and the Mackenzie Child print. Uh, because I didn't like, of course, the sides. I am and I want to leave it in the that I use trash. So I also cut some pieces uh, from cardboard and I'm just going to make the sides from the frame. I'm going to make also with the, the cardboard and of course I will paint this also in the black color to give it uh, a little bit more dimension and of course when you do the cardboard it also comes a little bit, it lifts a little bit up just like your um, ladybug will be. So I'm going to paint the pieces and then we're going to make it fitting inside of my canvas. So you see here I have the sides in the black color and now I'm going to glue them 
on top of my canvas board and I do this with normal glue not with my glue gun because not every time that is working the best uh, on top of my podge and you see it it gives a little bit of the rough side and I really love that because then you can see also that it's made out of trash and it gives a little bit more structure so this is what I'm going to do first I'm going to glue this on top of here so you see how my frame now turned out he is uh, dried up and he is painted uh, I just did paint it again uh, a second time because I didn't like the coat that much uh, so what I'm going to do right now, here I have my little uh, ladybug and of course I'm going to measure out where I'm going to uh, place him because he's a little bit bigger than I thought he would be. <laughs> he would be. So I will have to glue this on top of each other and what I'm going to do later is uh, now I'm going to make some, uh, I think it's called antenna. Uh, so you you know what I mean the little <laughs> the little stripes over here and the little dots on top of it. So I'm going to make his uh, I think it calls antenna if I'm correct here in the Netherlands we call it full spritten. So it is a little bit a different word full spritten of inderdaad antennas. So I'm going to cut this one and then I'm going to glue my little uh, ladybug. Uh, in uh, in uh, in this uh, picture frame and of course then we are going uh, ready to give it a little sign uh, under here so but first I'm going to uh, gl uh, glue this and make the little antennas antennas <laughs> this is not good English <laughs> so you see I did cut them from a uh, cardboard and now I'm going to make them black so I can glue everything together so you see already my ladybug is coming together what I need to do right now is just make some little black dots uh, on his wings and I just do it with some text mark of course you can do it with some uh, paint it doesn't matter but you just can make some little black dots and you can make them bigger you can make them smaller just what you want you see already now he's looking more and more like a ladybug. I will finish this and then I'm going to look if how can I can do the eyes because I'm like you all know I'm not a great um, maker of um, beautiful eyes or something else. So we are going to look for how we can solve this. So here you see how what I made of my ladybug. I know, I know, I am not a great, <laughs> great eye and uh, mouth maker. So. Uh, bear with me but I think he looks very cute but like we like I said we are going to uh, glue this on top of it and what I'm going to do right now just make a little little yeah you, you cannot call it a sign but just a little plate for over here and I just print it out on my computer to, you know already how I make my signs so I did three of them and I'm going to use this one so I'm going to mud podge this on this top of one and then he is almost finished so a totally change of plans <laughs> I eventually I was not very happy how my ladybug turned out and of course also my uh, my canvas was not the greatest what I did try I have such a, a gold uh, marker and he is uh, I'm so happy that I found this one because he's very easy to work with and you can make such a, a great a little um, accent on your piece so I did um, this the sides I did a little touch of the gold and now I like it a little bit better and I also did my ladybug <laughs> with the gold so don't <laughs> <laughs> don't be scared because he changed a lot you see here this is how my ladybug is right now and I love it much more I took his mouth away because it was just <laughs> a clown <laughs> I really didn't like it this was not for me the Mackenzie child uh, spirit so I didn't like it and you see here here is the little tag I use for under my this uh, under my uh, yeah, sign. Just what how you call this? It's yeah, it's it is a sign, but yeah, I don't know. Picture, you call it. So now I am still going to glue this on top of it, and then we are really finished.
and now I'm very happy how he turned out because like I said earlier I am not uh, a great uh, someone can always draw out of hand they can draw beautiful eyes beautiful mouth but this is not uh, my uh, thing so at least I'm very happy how this turned out and just with a simple gold gold marker so if you are running up with something just take it grab it and you will see you can use it with uh, a lot of things so I'm going to glue it and then I show you how he is really turning out so you see how my ladybug uh, sign turned out and I'm so happy and you see I did extra a little bow tie and the bow tie ribbon I just made a couple of the blocks I made with my text marker in the gold color so you see just everything blends together I am really happy how it looks like so you see with some cardboard some uh, old um, piece of canvas you can make anything you like everything was already in my home so and a lot of it is stress so I am very happy how it uh, turns out so I just hope like I always say that you just take a little bit of inspiration with you and make one of your own it doesn't matter which one but make one of your own and I'm so happy that you uh, are here and just watch Diane and me and of course you just saw making Diane making her humblebee so I am very happy we have a humblebee and a ladybug together so I hope you enjoyed watching. So these were our two DIYs. I hope you just enjoyed just seeing how we made a little humblebee and a little ladybug. I hope you just had fun, take a little inspiration with you and of course everyone go check out this playlist because you will like the playlist so much. And of course Casey and mom thank you so much for hosting this challenge together and of course everyone enough talking we wish you all a beautiful beautiful day stay safe take care of yourself and take care of each other and we hope to see you in diana my next video love from us bye